Last time on Fire Emblem Awakening. Roar! My steel is yours. That's so cute. <laughs> Once more. He grarred at us. Hey guys, Raiden here, and welcome back to Fire Emblem Awakening. So, uh, this last episode, I want to say a few things first. First of all, I know these episodes have been super short, and less consistent than usual for the first few episodes. Well, they're going to be coming back at a normal pace again, because the only reason the episodes weren't coming out was because Golden Sun, which is another series I was doing alongside this, is giving me trouble. Surprisingly, though, these technical difficulties aren't happening with this game. So, yeah, you guys are in the clear for that, and I just can't wait to play more Fire Emblem, basically. Uh, so, last episode, we did get a lot of supports going. I did get a lot of uh, cool advice about a lot of these characters and what they can do. I never knew how bad Virian apparently was. Uh, people, and by the way, I don't know how people aren't gonna, like... Well, I get a lot of things in the comment section that's just singular person, nothing else in their comment going, use character. <laughs> that is not going to convince me one way or the other to use a character, by the way. Or by telling me which character is specifically bad. I think it's it's definitely okay to tell me which characters are, like, stronger or which characters are weaker, because that is just factually true. A lot of people will be like, don't use this character, they're garbage. And I'm like, but that makes me want to use them even more. <laughs> um... But seeing as how I actually don't know who the other archer is in this game, because once again, apparently it's probably a child unit, uh, I might use that one instead. We'll see when we get there. Once again, Fire Emblem is one of those series where even if I have prior knowledge going in, I can't exactly plan out how everything goes. Um, one thing I also wanted to say was, yeah, expect episodes to get a bit longer from here. They've been way too short. Anyways, how about we go through some of these supports now? We have one between Virian and Frederick. Right. That's quite the handsome blade you carry, Virian. Did it just skip something? I, I don't think so. Elegant, sophisticated, a perfect match for its owner. Why, it's almost... Really? The hilt bears the sigil of House Clive. Clive? <sighs> yes, but you interrupted me. Forgive me. Apologies, but it's been troubling me for some time now. Just how is it you came to hold a dagger from one of Ulysses' highest noble houses? I enjoyed a brief but fruitful collaboration with the Claves once upon a time. Well, specifically with one young and very beautiful Clave. She gave me this blade as a token of our everlasting friendship. <laughs> Explain. I see, and when exactly did you find the time to foster such a bond? Ah, <sighs> uh, my dear naive Frederick. Not all bonds take equal time to form, you know. Some are forged in a lifetime, others spring to life in a moment. Others still take but one very good night. Wait! Oh, please, spare me the pious air. <laughs> but is that a hint of envy I see as well? Ha! Well, permit me to explain. It is my avocation to grant noble ladies a brief respite from their dreary lives. And I know no better way to do so than by ro romance's sweet perfume. But I always acted the gentleman. No harm befell their honor or reputation. Ah. Oh, that was never my concern. Elise's noble houses are built of sturdier stuff than one's dandy, one dandy's escapades can shake. Tell me, sir, do you always smile so as you twist the blade in a fellow's gut? Yes, well, you wondered about the history of my blade, and now curiosity is slaked. I have never heard the word slaked in my life. That is a new word I'm going to use. <laughs> if that's quite all, this dandy shall leave you to savor your unshakable honor. Right. A vacation, he says. <laughs> Quite the hobby. Yet I bet he has made many other powerful allies, such as uh, Tristis, or Tris. Oh, sorry. I need to reread that line. <laughs> oh, through such Tris. There we go. Dandy or no, the man is sly. Me thinks he merits watching. Frederick thinks he should be watching over everyone all the time. It's like, I saw you staring at- I saw you staring at Krom's shoes the other day. By the way, you guys said the last episode, I confuse Krom and Frederick a lot. And it's not that I was confusing them, it's just I kept calling Krom Frederick on accident, I guess. Which is, uh, something I must have been doing subconsciously because I didn't notice. Sully and Krom. Hmm? Hmm? Oh, hey, Sully. Krom. Hello, Krom. Listen. Are you here alone? I thought you'd be with Lissa and the rest of the women. Hell no! Why? So I can make dinner for all the brave men? Nuts to that, I'll tend the fire. What? 
That seems like a lot of hard work for one person. <laughs> Would you rather I cook or sew? No thanks, I hate all that crap. Really? Huh. Well, I guess I understand. You don't seem much like much of a... Er... Right. What, a lady? Go ahead, say it. No sweat off my thighs. <laughs> okay, then. I guess everyone has their own special talents and special thighs. Say, I can't really cook or sew either, but at least... But can I at least help with the fire? Yeah. Har, you're all right, Krom. I feel like she has, like, a very heavy-handed, uh thing going on with her character, like, right off the bat. It's like, I'm not a girl. I'm not like a girl. I'm not a woman. I'm a man-woman. Like, <laughs> Go through that. Now one with hmm. Onex install. Now, what would he want more than anything? Hmm, maybe a sword. <laughs> what am I thinking? He already owns the most treasured sword of all, and it literally never breaks. Hey. Hey, Onex. You thinking up a birthday present for old man Krom? Whoa. He's hardly old, Stahl. But yes, I am. And to be honest, I'm at a bit of a loss for ideas. Nah. Ha, <laughs> isn't that a pickle? <sighs> Buying for royalty would be hard enough, but we're in the middle of a war. It'd have to be small to transport easily with the caravan, and nothing excessive. <sighs> yeah, cheap is good. Crumb's never been much for gold and glitter anyway. I was actually thinking of brewing up a special concoction for him. You mean like a potion or tonic? I didn't know you dabbled in the dark arts, you. Hmm. My father's an apothecary. I actually... I don't think I actually know Stahl at all. <laughs> and he taught me the trade. Hmm. Homemade gifts are always the best. That's what... Would I... Wait, wait. Would that I possessed any such talents? So, uh... Or say, my ingredients are quite costly and difficult to find in the wild. Oh. Perhaps I could help gather them. Thanks. Yes, exactly. Then the present could be from the both of us. <laughs> Perfect, we can solve our problems in one fell swoop. <laughs> then it's a deal. <laughs> Hopefully I don't go picking up anything poisonous and being like, Here, Crow, I'm pretty sure this is a potion of healing. <laughs> it's like, uh, this is an empty vial of rusty nails. It's like, I'm sure it'll heal you if you wait long enough. <laughs> so sadly, we still can't access our inventory and we can't go to a shop and I can't do any of that stuff. But we can move on to the next chapter. Chapter 3, Warrior Realm. Uh, Ur, Frederick, I'm f f freebing. <laughs> I don't know why she sounded like Nephany for a second. Stand beside my horse. Wait, stand beside my horse, my lady. She'll shelter you from the wind. Oh. So this is the fortress. Why is right. it all bendy? <laughs> Yes, the Long Fort. It stretches along the border of Ulysse and Regna Ferox, the special printer of time. Ah. The cons. The, wait, the cons? <laughs> the cons that rule Ferox have grown quite wary of foreigners. Still, don't mistake a lack of hospitality for open hostility. This simply calls for a bit of diplomacy. <sighs> Negotiation's not my strong suit, but I'll do my best. Remember, everyone, your actions here reflect back upon your lease. <laughs> this is your Onyx from the bottom of the gate. Oh. It's like, what do you want? And Onyx is like, open the fucking gate. <laughs> Trouble in the wind, my lord. The Feroxy guard are mobilizing. What? What? Why? Right. Who can say? But they're, they look ready to fly at a moment's notice. We'd best prepare for combat just to be safe. Perhaps we ought to pool our supplies and select which shepherds to deploy. Loath as I am to trust him, Onex might offer some valuable insight on this. Mm. Indeed, he is our tactician, after all. So, Onex, what do you suggest? I, uh, I suggest we actually try diplomacy before deploying. I mean, can't we just grab a megaphone or something and just shout, Hey, I'm, th I'm the crown prince! <laughs> Okay, so now we're back here. Um, I ducked out for a second thinking like, oh, I have to leave to switch around everyone's equipment. I don't know why I thought that. Probably just... I didn't even have to do that in Radiant Dawn now that I think about it. Never mind. I guess I'm just going nuts. But, um, I ducked out for a second and switched around some equipment. Things like the fact that Virian had a sword that he couldn't use and, um, I gave... Stall... I think I gave him a lance, and then I gave Sully, yeah, the Iron Lance and Salos Blade for now. 
as far as how you're supposed to do this map, I believe, the way you're supposed to do it, I guess, is you're supposed to, um, I think one of these guys, yeah, you're supposed to kill these guys who have door keys, and then you can run up these barricades and get to the doors, and unlock them, and murder the people inside. I think someone on this side also has a door key. But my general strategy, even though it kind of, in, like, wants you to go, hey, I'm gonna split up my units. I don't. <laughs> I just send them all to one side. It's much more efficient and much more safe. But, um, if there is one thing I missed that I think you could do in Fates, was that you could pair up units before the map even started. <laughs> now, I think that was a feature back then, and I remember it fairly well. But yeah, let's get going. And fight. Who goes there? Halt, who goes there? <clears throat> in the name of House Yalise, I seek an audience with the cons. Halt! Not another step, my bold lad. I've set my lancers at the ready. Wait. Hold, milady, we are not your enemy. Exalt Emerin herself sent us to discuss matters of mutual interest. What? My only interest is keeping you out of Re uh, Regna Ferox, brigand. Like, Something that's never made much sense to me about this whole entire scene is, like, don't we have any sort of royal identification to let us in? Being like, hey, I have the seal of the exult, or hey, I have the thing. Like, is the fire emblem the only possible thing you can use to identify yourself? <laughs> Brigand, now see here. Right. You think you are the first Ulysseans to, to try and cross our borders. I have the authority to fell such imposters where they stand. What? How dare you! <laughs> I love how offended Frederick gets. You're in the presence of Prince Krom, the Exalt's own blood. Hmm. Huh, yes indeed. And I'm the Queen of Valm. You do realize impersonating royalty is a capital offense, yes? Hmm. Then perhaps we should settle this the Feroxy way. You claim to be the Prince of Ulysses and prove it on the battlefield. Really? You're gonna throw away your soldiers' lives instead of coming down here and talking to me? <laughs> Ugh, Emrin won't like this at all. Please, good lady, if you just listen! I've heard quite enough, attack! I forgot about this cutscene. By the way, I just want to make it clear that Krom dabbed out of the way of those spears. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's dead, but Prince Krom can bring it back. You'll be fine. That framing is super off. It doesn't even look like he's looking at her. Sumia! Right. Sumia, fly me closer so I can hit them with my sword. <sighs> oh, Captain, I'm so relieved I made it in time. Listen. That goes double for me, Sumia. And this, is this the same ornery Pegasus we met on the road? <laughs> oh, she's a sweetheart, isn't she? Once you really get to know her. Good. Well, many thanks to you both. I think the Pegasus is blushing. And I think we'd all best focus on the situation at hand. Krom. Krom, they're coming! <clears throat> Thank you, my well-able tactician. I could not see that for myself. All right, the Feroxy way it is. <sighs> Defeat Commander. <sighs> Fila said Pegasi can fly far afield, but they're highly vulnerable to arrows. Don't worry, girl. I'll watch out for archers for both of our sakes. Not sure if Onex will. I'm sure Onex would never send me into range of archers ever. Because I trust him. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do and my plan for this map is actually just send everyone left. <laughs> uh, because that works the best. There's no actual reason to split any of these people up. There is no timer on this map or anything, so... I'm free to just kind of go and talk to whoever. So we're going to start by talking to Callum. Why do I feel like I'm being watched? Don't you see me? Um, s sir, right here, sir. <sighs> Who's there? Show yourself! <clears throat> I'm standing in plain sight, sir, right here. Huh? <laughs> oh, is that you, Callum? When did you arrive? What? The same time as you? I've been with you all along. Or I am still a shepherd, right? It's quite the honor, after all. I'd hate to lose it. Sometimes I... Forgive me. Of course, Callum. Forgive me. You're just so quiet, I completely... <laughs> <laughs> Quite all right, sir. Quite all right. I've been told I'm easy to miss. <sighs> At least the Feroxy didn't find you. Uh, I've been calling me. to you and waving my arms for several minutes. 
I didn't think they've... Oh, wait, I didn't... I don't think they've so much as glanced this way. Really? You sound almost disappointed. If you say so. Well, I just... I'm glad you finally saw me. Just try to keep an eye out from now on. So, uh, we just recruited Kellum, who is a knight. So, Kellum, uh, he's a knight. Knights are slow, but they're big and strong. And people have high prejudice against them. I just learned, apparently, I didn't know this because of my, um, my solo op. Uh, from my first Awakening playthrough with Kellum. But apparently Kellum's really bad. I didn't know that, and that's fine, because I'm not going to be using him much this time anyway, because I used him a whole bunch last time. So, he's also not on the list of people that are going to be overly used. But anyways, he's a knight, and he also kind of has one of these useless skills that I hate. Oh my god, I can't push the button on the screen, it's too small. There we go. <laughs> Um, Kellum also has a skill that I hate, which is defense plus two, which grants defense plus two. Um, the only real use these skills have design-wise is so you can pass them down. If there's maybe a second generation, I don't know. Perhaps that's a thing. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, you can pass them down to other units eventually. And aside from that, it's kind of a dumb skill. I mean, they could have just given all knights plus two defense and then given them any other kind of useful skill. <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to have Kellum just kind of sit right here in the middle and tank a bunch of people. And in the meantime, we're going to pair people up like we did before. Uh, what bonuses do I give Muriel? I give her... Plus one magic and plus two strength, which she doesn't really need. She get a bigger benefit from being paired up with uh, Lisa. Well, I don't know. I feel like Stall can be on his own for a bit. I need to help her get kills. Because uh, I really want to use Muriel this time. I think she's she has a cool design, kind of, even though she's just kind of like glasses, wizardry hat lady. But uh, I didn't use her, so she's on the list this time. Xeno's VIP list of characters. Um, so we're gonna have Virian pair up with Frederick again. Hold on. Let me make sure that my uh, 3DS brightness is up to par. It is. Cool. So what I'm gonna do is it looks like only an archer could hit Virian if he was over here. So I'm gonna station Virian right here next to Frederick. And they will be attacked. Um, I don't know. I guess I'll put these two together for now. And they will move up. And then Sumio will move up. Oh yeah, I also should probably show off Sumio real quick. So yeah, he's a tanky knight. He does a lot of damage, is very slow, and is very tanky. Well, he does an okay amount of damage, I should say. Not a lot. The a lot of damage tag is assigned to warriors. <laughs> or fighters, as I should call them. It's all right. But he's really good for softening up units early on, it seems. Because he doesn't have enough speed to kill anyone. But he can put them within killing range, so he's fantastic for that. Unlike Frederick, who will just destroy anything in his way. Huh. Hmm? What is it, Onyx? Yeah. I've been thinking about how you rode with Sumia earlier. Do our units always have to fight one-on-one? -on -one? Really? What, what, what do you mean, do they always have to fight one-on-one? -on -one? We're an army, we're supposed to be fighting together. Are you suggesting we pair up? That's an interesting thought. I admit it, I'd resemble or I'd resemble a pincushion right now if it weren't for Sumi and her mount. I see. Exactly. By pairing up, units could lend each other aided or added offense and defense. It might also allow quicker soldiers to ferry slower units great distances. Like, for some reason, I don't know how, but we could probably fit Kellum onto like Sumia's Pegasus, and hopefully it won't just crumple under the weight of like tons of armor. But yes, I'm sure of it. This opens up all sorts of strategic possibilities. We should try whenever the opportunity presents itself. So that's what I've been doing. They're just talking about putting the units uh, on top of each other to make them a singular tile. Anyways. 
Uh, we're going to switch to Krom now. And Krom is going to... Attack this archer. Hey, over here. <laughs> so that's that. Um, I'm going to run over here with her. Oh, damn, it's not enough. Only if I helped her would it become enough. Never fear. <laughs> My turn. Frederick, why do you help everyone out? Seriously, I know you guys have one support level, but every time my units are with each other, they never want to do pair-up attacks. But when it's you and Frederick, you're just constantly like, yep, gotta kill him. Doesn't matter. So I don't think I'll be able to get anyone within range of this archer to take him out, so I'm not gonna send Sumia in. Twelve damage, exactly. Over there. Cool. Because the important thing is getting Muriel those initial levels. Like, that's the hardest part of it all. Ooh, exactly the stats you need. Propi uh, propietous, prop propietous growth. Hopefully I'm saying that right. If I may say so. If Sino can say things the correct way the first time. So let's put Muriel over there. Um, as far as Lise goes, just heal people. She'll probably get hit by that archer, but whatever. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. So we have Sumia, who's a Pegasus Knight, by the way. She's the first one we get. And uh, Pegasus Knights can fly over things, have fantastic movement, and are weak to bows. Um, they're okay otherwise. Apparently in Awakening, the Pegasus Knights become really good. Or at least good for Pegasus Knights. <laughs> um, plus, they, since there's pair up, they're really strong because they can ferry people around. So, And they start with the ability Speed Plus 2, another skill I'm not a fan of. But whatever. And she's also only level one. Look out. So, yeah, that's the thing I'm horrible at early game, though, is trying to balance experience, especially since you get so many units that just start at level one. Let's go. Well, that sucked. Key. We can use it to, to open the fortress doors. So we can do that, but what I'm actually going to do is curve all of our units back around this way in order to kill all these guys, because experience. And I don't plan on grinding in this playthrough, unless it's necessary for children. I don't know, because I didn't use the children, so I don't actually know if they require grinding or not. <laughs> it already feels as though Onex has been a shepherd forever. It's funny how fighting alongside someone speeds friendships along. I'm not your friend. <laughs> and then the more we fight side by side, the more valuable those friendships become. Alright, so... Just gonna leave Kellum out here so he can take the brunt of the attacks. Although, not that many people could hit him, but at least they're in range of us. Okay, so I'm going to move Virian over here. Or maybe not Virian, maybe... Uh, Muriel can't do enough damage. Does the Lightning Tome do more? Uh, Might 3. 
Might 2. Yes, the Lightning Tome does a bit more, but... And it doesn't require anything else. So I could just trade. You know what? We'll do that last. In the meantime, um, you two can ride over here and fight this guy. How come no one's helping each other? <laughs> I know it's only a chance that it'll happen, but... Still. Okay, Krom. I want... Actually, I want Virian to kill this guy. I want Kellum to help bring down this guy. And I'll have Krom rush in here. Can he even do that? Yeah, Sumia, hide behind Krom for a second. Um... It's no guarantee that Krom can even kill some of these people. Stay strong. Thanks, there we go. No damage there. And here's where things get kind of dicey. Because this next thing kind of depends on if Muriel can do the thing or not. Actually, do I have higher magic than she does? I do. And she'll probably give me a better buff. So I switch us around. Yeah, I can kill this guy. Easily. Hmm, what now? That's it. And now the only one left that's even sort of in danger is Stall, but he has a grand total of 11 defense, as where the archer only has 15 attack. So it's 4 damage and he will not die, because I believe he is fast enough, and he is. He will not be doubled. So to double people, you guys told me, and I'm glad I remembered this, uh, you have to be at least double plus one of the person's speed. So in order to double someone with four speed, it takes nine defense. In order to double someone with 10 speed, it takes 21 defense, as I understand. Really? You went for Onyx? I'm kind of surprised at that, but whatever. Yeah, you got him, Muriel. Just trying to level her up while it's still kind of easy to do. <laughs> and if you, as I was saying, if you guys notice with my kind of editing style, for turns where I'm just moving people around and healing, you'll probably see like a quick cut. Um, if you usually see a cut, that means I wasn't doing anything very important. I want to see if I can get Muriel something else. I don't know. Or if we're just going to be friends. Someone misplaced. This people ought to properly secure their possessions. Finn's Lance! Aw, oh, Finn's the best. I didn't finish um, Fire Emblem 4, but I love Finn. He's awesome. He was like my MVP unit, actually. Um, although I didn't even get to the second generation. But in the first generation, he was awesome. Uh, let's take a look at that. Luck and defense. <laughs> a fabled weapon. Only requires a D rank to use. So that is pretty okay, if you ask me. Why, thank you. So who has the key right now? Um, someone has a key. Oh, I... No, no, Muriel has it. And there's no way I'm having Muriel storm the door. So I'm actually gonna have... Kellum grab the key. Oh, wait. Does she not have it? I thought I just read that she had it. Did I misread that? No, I have it, not Muriel. Trade. The Onex. All right, so let's take a look up here real quick. What do we have? We have a knight who is, of course, low resistance. In fact, zero, so I'm perfect for taking him out. And within current range, there's no one. We can get a slight buff by standing on stairs, which doesn't make much sense in this situation because if you're standing on the stairs that go into the building, that means that they have the high ground, which means that they have the technical advantage. But, you know, whatever. 
Um, aside from that, everyone here is pretty normal. Does that guy have a javelin, though? So I need to know. No, he doesn't. Door. Um, actually, I could walk past Kellum this turn and do this. Switch. Oh, yeah, Muriel could probably do it if I let her. God damn it, Frederick. Just, just let someone... Let someone attack. Oh, well. Seriously, no one else here just does pair-up attacks, but Frederick's just like, I'm going to pair-up attack always. It may be because he's a pre-promote, and perhaps pre-promotes have a higher chance of doing a pair-up attack? But I don't know. And I just noticed this. I never noticed it before, but Frederick actually misses out on all the skills from being a uh, cavalier, I think. Or I guess it's because it actually promoted him before he hit 20? I don't know. Anyways. Um, one, two. So I'm going to place... Um, I'm going to place Stall over here with a bronze spear. And then we're all just going to kind of crowd around behind him. Because I still need to get everyone through the door. I'm going to attract that guy with an axe towards Kellum. Oh my god, he had a hammer! What? Enemies get hammers this early? I mean, I knew I should have looked, but... <laughs> oh, sorry, my voice just cracked, but... I didn't think they got hammers this early. So I didn't really pay that much attention. Huh. Okay. Well, first death on, like, chapter four. <laughs> I I'm done for. I wonder if anyone will notice I'm gone. Well then. You can Restart. <laughs> okay, and we are back. Um, that was hilarious. I never thought that they would give anyone a hammer on, like, chapter three. Especially with, like, how much the game babies you, I figured they'd be like, Oh, hey, look out, there's a hammer! But maybe it's because this is hard mode that it just kind of shoves it in the enemy's hands and doesn't say anything. <laughs> oh, that was funny. That was really funny. Um, anyways. To negate that hammer this time, we'll stick Krom right over here. Although there is an issue of the fact that now he is within range of a lot of enemies. Luckily, this guy can't reach right above Krom, so I can guard him with Kellum. And then... I can put Frederick up here, too. So now we wait. They're all going to hone in on Krom. Which is fine, because I think he can take it. In fact, he won't even kill that guy. So I don't have to worry about him getting hit with a hammer. Okay, so this is actually the position we really wanted in the first place. <laughs> uh, it's such a silly thing. Okay, so we're gonna switch to... Kellum, and he had the javelin all along, which I nearly forgot about. Um... Yeah, I'm not gonna do that to Kellum, though. <laughs> I'm gonna have him do something else. But what we're gonna do first off is... Even though she's at a disadvantage here, I still think this is a pretty good trade. Or I could just do this, too. Yeah, we'll do this. You can do this. And hit that guy like that. And then we can get Sumia some XP. And now... We can have Kellum run over here behind this guy and try to hit him with an iron lance and that sets up two free kills for us 
Hey, did you see how- Oh, no one's looking. <laughs> Literally me. Uh. Okay, so, um. Who's lower? You're both the same. It doesn't matter. We can handle this. <laughs> and now... There we go. Muriel's leveling up nicely. Oh, yes, the difference between uh, last time and this time is, first of all, uh, Muriel got a lot of growth for her only growth last time, but now she got magic, so it's fine. Uh, but instead of getting Finn's blade, Muriel actually got um, Tome experience, so she's now D rank in Tome, so that's fine too. Or did I just say? Yeah, Finn's uh, spear. I meant if I said something else. So I don't think, yeah, she's the type of boss that can't really move. Does this guy have a hammer? No, he doesn't, thank goodness. And now we just kind of wait. Oh, by the way, he dropped the hammer, so now uh, Sumia has it. Although the only person who can use a hammer right now is Krom, since Vike isn't on the team currently. So he's still an axe user, so he can still hurt Kalim a decent bit, but not enough to actually impede him in any way. Let's go. So if Muriel switches to the Lightning Tome, which she can now use. Actually, I think she could use it before, but whatever. She can easily kill this guy. I'll cover you. Thank God she didn't miss. <laughs> okay. Where did Lissa go? Oh, she's still down there. Whoops. Um... How do I want to go about this? I want to move Kellum back here. I'll have him throw a javelin. Missed on 20%. That's fine, though. We can deal with that. Let's see, so can you two? Yeah, they both can. But the issue comes in it. They can't both. Okay. Whatever. So I want Crumb to move up here and sword this guy. So by the way, I haven't actually looked at the Falchion yet. I meant to, for people who haven't played Awakening before. But the Falchion is an infinite durability weapon that has power against dragons. Crumb only. Its power remains sealed. So I think there's an unsealed version of it or something where it gets better. I don't remember that from my original playthrough, but... So, I'm kind of afraid of this guy getting a hold of Muriel. So, we're going to use the emergency uh, Frederick switch here. And destroy him. Because I don't want him to hit Muriel and end the entire mission. There. And there's one of those little XP sparkles over here. So, I'm probably just going to go over there and grab that real quick. Switch. All done polishing weapons. Can't fight Jack Squat without a trusty blade or bow. Twelve experience. How worth it. Alright. And now we can end the map. Because all I have to do is take Virian. Oh shit, he can't do anything. Maybe not. Maybe I have to readjust our uh, strategy a little bit. But... I want Frederick to do too much. Yeah, this should be fine. Let our battle sound out the truth of your words. Or we could just talk. I mean... It's not a bad option, really. Uh. 
So we did a decent amount, but the whole point of that was so I could have Muriel finish her off, which she can't do quite yet. Uh, Krom, how much can you do? Not much. He could use his rapier, but we're not going to expend that right now, and I can just put him within uh, kill range. Actually, I might not be able to. Hold on, we'll see about that. Now, you know what we can actually just do? Just end the turn. Which will attack Frederick again. Which will result in... Yep, within kill range. So now Muriel and I can just walk in and destroy. Let's go. <laughs> I probably should have equipped something else on Odex. He's like, wrong move! Runs up to her. It's like, oh shit, you have plate mail. <laughs> then your claims were true. <laughs> I love how useless I was in that scene. Oh, and by the way, when you guys also pointed out that I've been using this specific camera angle, magic and skill. Fine by me. I'm a staunch believer of amelioration. Amelori. Amelior. Odex, just say the thing. God damn it, I hate her character. Not like her character, but the fact that it's making me read all these words I'm failing to pronounce. <laughs> I just get tongue twisted trying to say some of them. Forgive me. Oh yeah, as I was saying, uh, I use the sideways camera angle for battle. I like it because it makes it look like a fighting game, but I promise I will change it in the future because I think the dynamic one really represents the animations a bit better. I just completely forgot about it until <laughs> just now. A thousand apologies, Prince Krom. I truly took you for brigand imposters. Yeah, all these brigands with blue hair and shiny plates and none of us look like brigands. <laughs> but no frauds could ever wage a battle as you just have. I will send word of your arrival to the capital and escort you there personally. Good. That would be most appreciated. Thank you. I really don't like the Awakening Knight designs. Amazing, her whole demeanor changed after we kicked her ass. Right. In Ferox, strength speaks louder than words. I should have known better than to overestimate the value of diplomacy here. Right. Can we get going, Krom? Mm. Yes, it's not getting any warmer. 